The Eastern softball team is currently ranked 15 in the nation, coming off of a doubleheader victory, two victories yesterday against Trinity College, moving their record so far in the year to 4-0. and And joining me here now to talk about all of that and more is the head coach of Eastern softball, Diana Pepin. Coach, thank you for joining me. Thank you, Tyler. I appreciate you having us on. Absolutely. So let's start with yesterday's game. 8-0 to zero win in the first game, 5-2 to two win in the second. What has stood out to you most about your team with this 4-0 start? They're just a great team, um, and they they get along really well. So big thing is they're versatile, right? So um, I can put a number of different people in different spots and move them around, and they're just going to do the best they can and play for each other. And I think that's the most important aspect of our team right now. You only played two games in that 2020 season before Eastern's camp is shut down like everything else shut down. Uh, what what has been the biggest challenge for your team and for you coming back to the game of softball after being gone from it for so long? Yeah, last year was definitely heartbreaking um, coming off the 2019 season. And we just wanted to get back to Texas, Tyler, and win a national championship. And I think we were in such a great position to do that with um, all our veterans coming back and our pitching staff and, you know, everybody. And so it was just heartbreaking to see that. And we stayed together. Um, My message to them was we just need to control what we can control be positive, look forward to whenever we play next, and be grateful for the opportunity to play. And they really have taken that and run with it. And we have great leadership with Megan Hodgden and Alexis Tyrell and a bunch of other kids, Julia San Giovanni and Brooke Matasowski. Um, so, you know, I think you know, the message really is appreciate the opportunity moving forward, and they've done that. I want to talk to you about one of those opportunities we heard about moving forward. The NCAA came out. We didn't have Division three tournaments uh, for the winter season, the abbreviated winter season we had for basketball uh, here on campus, but they announced last week that there will be national championship tournament competition for the spring sports for Division three. So can you talk to me about the team's reaction to that, and does that add another level of motivation to, uh, uh, to practice every day? So... Our philosophy is what's important now. So we're focused on, you know, each game, each pitch, what we're doing. Um, We didn't think that there wasn't going to be a tournament. We were hopeful that there would be. And I'm on the champs committee, so I'm privy to that a little bit. So they didn't know that it wasn't even an option because I didn't tell them. So they're ecstatic to play. And their overall goal is to win every game and hope for an automatic bid because there's only four pool C's, which at large bids, and that's very difficult to obtain if we do not get an automatic bid. So they're ecstatic. You talked about it before. I want to ask you about that 2019 team. That was a run to remember in the NCAA tournament, finishing third in the country, uh, not before upsetting the number one and number two teams when you did make it down to Tyler, Texas. And you mentioned it before, the leadership of those players that are returning from that team. Can you talk to me and expand on that more, the impact that those returning players have on this team? Well, they know what it takes to go to a national championship Um So I think they're really the heart and soul of where we are and creating a culture for the newcomers coming in and making sure that they're well taken care of. They know what to do in given situations and they're supportive of their teammates. I think that, you know, Megan Hodgden has evolved into such a great leader. I mean, she's really been our captain for three years and she will make sure everybody is um, a good teammate. She'll lead them on the field by example. She's the hardest working kid on the field. Alexis Tyrell, same thing. You know, she's a competitor. She's going to go after everything she can. I mean, yesterday was a prime example. I mean, that was an All-American outcome. I mean, a performance by her. And 
I mean, maybe she didn't hit a ton, but she stole bases and she made some great plays in right field, um, along with Cassie Woods, who is a great addition to our program in center field, picking up for Sabrina Lemire, who graduated. And in that respect, we didn't lose a beat in center field, but our pitching staff is totally different. And I think um, as it's as a team, we are just appreciative that Brooke Matuszowski is being a great teammate and helping out because she didn't come in as a pitcher. So she's helping out with pitching and Carly Stoker is just amazing with her work ethic and her competitive drive and doing everything she can to put us in a position to win games. So we saw Carly Stoker yesterday, the junior transfer from Central Connecticut, who pitched her second complete game, one hit shutout in just two starts for you guys. Uh, can you talk to me about her along with the other newcomers to this program and what they add to this team? Yeah, I think that, you know, Carly Stoker is a workhorse. Um, she's going to give you everything she has. She's appreciative of the opportunity to be out there coming from a D1 program and she just wants to win and she wants to compete. And so um, she adds a new dimension to our pitching staff as well as she can play anywhere really. And she's batting third. Um, hitting wise, three, four, and five is unstoppable. I mean, they're power hitters. So she adds that dimension. And then Cassie Woods in center field um, just will catch any ball in the vicinity of the outfield, really. And she puts the ball in play. She'll steal bases. I mean, another competitor, another person who just wants the team to be successful. And then you have Sarah Rem Remillard, who is pitching. She didn't come in as a pitcher and playing second base and doing whatever you need her to do, put down a sacrifice bunt, total team player as well. So they've really bought in and helped us um, moving towards our goals of going back to the NCAA tournament. So talking about the team uh, buying into that process here of that goal, what has been your message to the team starting off 4-0 and looking to build on that momentum of starting off undefeated in these first uh, few games? Again, we just take it day by day. Um, if I keep them in the moment and they're working hard and they're having fun and they're playing together, then this team is really unstoppable. And yesterday was a prime example of that. I moved people around all over the field um, and people came up with clutch hits. Um, we called a squeeze. That was effective. We've stolen bases, got key defensive stops. Um, so yeah, we're just staying in the moment and enjoying the process. Staying in the moment, coach. I like that. Thank you very much for taking the time and good luck the rest of the way. Thank you, Tyler. We appreciate all you do at ETV and your crew is amazing. Absolutely. So you can Eastern soft. We'll be back in action tomorrow uh, against Rhode Island college. You can see that game streaming live on little slash Eastern Connecticut.